leaves tastes good like a beer should. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What's that you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. No matter how you take your hooch, we've got something ice cold and on tap. Now, serving it to you straight and unfiltered, here are Craig, Scott, and Dan. Welcome in, everybody. Somebody's got to get a new voiceover for us. We're the Unfiltered Gentle Man and People. I am Craig. <laughs> Being joined again this week is Shannon. Hi. And Deb. Hey. Hello. Thank you, ladies, for joining me again. Uh, once again, this room is looking a whole lot better than it normally does, and uh, we've all brought the average age down quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, without Scott <laughs> being here. <laughs> that prostate exam is really taking quite some time. He's still uh, at the doctor's office, I hear, and it's just They're not going They're being very well. thorough. Extremely thorough. Yeah. Snap. So uh, thank you, ladies, for joining and filling in again, and uh, I think Dan's out on a date. He said he was going to take some girl out on a Segway, and they were going to have a nice little dinner uh interim brian is also here fact checking me as he was last week i like the fact checking uh, i like being told i'm wrong on the spot not be a text message a couple days later so this is uh this is good for me i need <laughs> i need to know that i'm wrong so thank you for that uh we got a lot to get to today we have a beer review from mike aka sir food savage up in canada a eh? we got uh, a couple of beers to drink and talk about some big booze news and of course the bullpen beer uh in Wow. In the meantime, that was really hard to say. Uh, must mean I need a beer. Let's start talking about the beer that's in front of us. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I say, I think I'll have myself a beer. We are having ourselves a beer. This one comes to us by way of Firestone Walker up in Paso Robles, California. It's Grenadier Pale Ale. 4.9%, 38 IBUs, has a 367 on untapped. From the brewery, they say the name of this beer is a tribute to the coastal Santa Lucia Mountains, which are etched into our local lifestyle and emblematic of the rugged West Coast spirit. Inspired by our legendary Pale 31 and conceived in collaboration with the Brewing Network, Grenadier is a new age pale ale loaded with explosive hoppiness. Is anybody getting hops exploding in their mouth? No, not at all. And I'm even seeing that the the artwork on the bottle has a hop that's like a grenade. Right. And... I really like this beer, so I can tell you it is not hoppy. <laughs> That's I, true. I mean, fundamentally, I was expecting just no <sighs> enamel on my teeth. Right. Given the artwork, given its name, a California Look pale at all ale. These hops. Yeah, mm-hmm. California pale ale makes me think, oh, it's going to be a pine tree. Mm-hmm. I don't get any of that. Interesting. Deb? So, it could be because I did have a snack (laughs) shortly before we uh, came in here to do this show, but I'm getting a buttery off flavor. Mm. Oh, I was going to say corn. And I like a little diacetyl, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm... I feel it in the mouthfeel. I taste it. To me... I don't yeah. know. I don't know what the deal is here, but it's like all I can taste. I don't so much get the buttery. I do get a little hint of green, which would be that diacetyl. Uh, yeah, it's uh, not my favorite thing from Firestone. I love Firestone. I absolutely I love, love Firestone. Firestone. I do not love this beer. I don't no. know what happened here. And I love Pale Thirty One. Right? Heck yeah. R.I.P. Pale Thirty One. This is not a fitting tribute. Um. Intern Brian is chanting, bring, bring it, back. it back. Yeah, I would love they brought it back as long as it doesn't taste like this. Uh, every now and then we find a beer that's just not that great. And this is one of those. And I think we're all in concurrence. I mean, look, I would drink it. It's not a drain pour. Totally not. Yeah. Like, uh, it's fine. I'm just saying it's not what I expected yeah. at all. And you have to buy the multi-pack in order to, you can't just go buy a six pack of this. So like, I had to go buy the multi-pack because I wanted to try this. And 
honestly, in that multi pack, it's probably the only one I would really enjoy. Yeah, I think the other was Luponic. ironically. It's like Luponic Distortion, Easy Jack, and Union Jack. I think came with this one, which are all hoppier but than you, this beer. You like yourself a few of the Luponics. Yes, mm-hmm. twelve. Number 12. 12, yeah. That was like the strawberry one, I think. Mm, so good. Yeah, and they just came with 14. Haven't had it yet, but 13, not so good. It's, it's sad that I remember these numbers. Which one was in 13? That was... Uh, key, key was it lime? One. Okay. I was going to go pineapple. It's in our that was fridge right 11. now. You can try it. Yeah, we do have a 13 yeah, in the fridge yeah. downstairs. Uh, my favorite of all time, number two. Number two. That was a good one. Was but, that the uh, peach ring? That was before they went crazy with the fruit. The first nine were not fruity. Okay. And number two, they were all very similar. In fact, on the show, God, this I think it was our Christmas episode in 2016, we lined up the first seven of their series and had them all back to back and did a little beer science, uh, which obviously the first few weren't very fresh by that point. They did not age well. They didn't age well. <laughs> but uh, I think number two was still the winner, even uh, not being the freshest of the fresh. So it was, it was canned, so it did okay. It wasn't bottles, luckily. Um, but yeah, sorry, Firestone. We love you, but uh, we don't love this. This is a lot like uh, dark. Not a lot like. No, what? Not at all like. I, Excuse what? me. Hold on. Sorry, misspoke. <laughs> not at all like, but it reminds me of disliking the experience. The experience. Is so like dark it's the funny. it's the expectation, right? They set you up with an expectation sure. when you see the label, when you hear about the beer, about who made the beer, and that it only comes in the multi pack. Right. It is. It sets you up for getting a really hoppy explosion. Well, the other three beers are hoppy. Right. So you're thinking like, this is going to line right up. Right. And this is very easy drinking ale Mm, to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which shows that there's not a lot of hops. And you can pour it over your popcorn. (laughs) A little liquid butter. (laughs) I see what you did there. Sick (laughs) burn. (laughs) Wow. Sick burn. Um, all right. Well, that's our word on Grenadier. Sorry, Firestone. Send us uh, something better and we'll say nice things. Yeah. That's how you know we're not getting paid. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's how you know. Cleanse our palates. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's do a little crotch talk. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. This beer doesn't count as a grievance. I was going to say, we've already been. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, let me see. My only grievance this week is uh, the lady friend and I over here have decided to get new flooring in the house which is like great your flooring looks like ass what a great idea you guys have undertaken except boy has that spiraled and snowballed into we must replace everything in this house we started painting then also we're buying new light fixtures and what else have we bought so far jesus lots of things just the ability to paint requires things we didn't have like youthfulness (laughs) but even like we had to and optimism yes you know first time homeowners you know homos yes yeah what we had to borrow a ladder oh yeah we don't well where are we gonna store a ladder right where are we gonna put so you had to like it required action to even begin yeah it's so much and and we painted the place before we moved in when we bought it we painted it before we moved anything in and boy, was that so much easier than what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah, because you got to move furniture. You got to like box shit up. Yeah. It, the kitchen was the worst. So hopefully this is almost over. I have never felt older in my life. It is just killing me. I've, I'm bending over and squatting and I'm still talking about painting and getting down on my knees. Still talking about painting. I mean, I get to shop, so I'm perfectly happy. Yeah, but. you love that part of it. Boy, has it been a pain in the fucking ass. Are you guys buying your Tylenol at Costco? Of course buy everything at costco so then you got a big ass bottle for every time you have <laughs> exactly yeah i got that to leave all day long all day strong mm-hmm. that's why i have a kegerator every time i start to hurt i just go fill up take your medicine Mm-hmm. i usually I'm such a bad person i always end up taking pills with beer because i usually take like i take my allergy pill at night or like at night i'll be sitting there and if i get a headache i'll take you know leave or whatever and at night i'm drinking beer which if you read the bottles you're not really supposed to do that but uh, it's little, just a suggestion. Just Yeah, it's not a hard and fast rule. So anyways, that's my grievance is this goddamn housework. Any any other grievances that people want to share or, or any good beer experiences you want to talk about? I'll just a generic grievance about L.A. OK, so I have about a 45 minute drive to work and it's about it, four miles. Yeah, it consistently takes me 45 minutes. Right. 
pretty much no matter what time I leave, it's going to take me 45 minutes to get to work if I want to get to work anywhere around my start time. This week has been like the worst for traffic. We have had, it's been an accident on every freeway in every direction has taken me over an hour to get hour, hour and a half to get to work every single day. Ouch. And I don't like it because it's like these random things happened all at once, but it is every day. So now I feel like it's the new normal and I'm not okay with that. I guess you better quit your job. No, people need to learn how to drive. Oh, that's the moral of the story. Or also, I mean, there was the one foggy day and there were literally six accidents that day. Like I had no good route to take to work because every route had an, had accidents. Wait till we get our one rain of the season. I know. It's, it's going to be a shit thing. show. Yeah. People outside of California, especially Southern California, don't realize the shit show that is California in the rain. That is really a Southern California thing. Yeah. I, I'm just saying... I'm from oh, Northern California, and yeah, because we do not get, have that issue. You get hella rain up there, don't you? We do hella rain. Hella rain. By the way, that's a Bay Area thing. You're what? getting really specific with the hella. Yeah, and it needs to stop. But you're hella rude, so knock it off. Uh, anyways, all right. Any other grievances? Any beer anybody wants to talk about? I have a funny anecdote in relation to the first rain in California. Please. Oh yeah. So it actually happened already, and people don't realize this, but it rained for about ten minutes. Like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago like in LA. Here, I was driving down the 101 South. Yeah. And it started to sprinkle. And I turned on my windshield wipers and realized that the rubber on one of them was just like flopping in the wind. <laughs> that is how like much not, it rains. Yeah, That's a like common not problem. attached at all, except for like just at the bottom. And it's just flopping in mm-hmm. the wind. And so I realized, oh shit, I can't put my wipers on right. so it's like i don't want it to scratch my windshield so i just drove to calabasas with the rain and mm. you know i figured i've driven that freeway enough times that i you know i was good gets bad enough just ride the bumps yeah, yeah. exactly yeah just like being drunk we've all done it i <laughs> mean don't drink and drive people mm-hmm. um all right well good that's that we have a beer review from mike aka sir food savage up in canada a eh? And listen for like the specific Canadian words like a boot. Let's let's see if we can like turn this into a drinking game every time he says something very Canadian. Get your glasses. Cheers, everybody. What's up, gents? It's Sir Food Savage coming at you with another Canadian craft beer review. This time I have a beer from Toronto. Dan knows where Toronto is because it's home of the raining. Defending NBA champions, the Toronto Raptors. Shout out. But I digress because this beer is a shout out to you guys for your love of baseball. It comes from Left Field Brewery. It is the Big Train Zero IBU IPA. That's right, zero IBUs. It comes at you at 6.1%. Comes in the short can. Left Field does the short can because, you know, if you're going to the baseball game, you want all the short cans, not the tall can, so you can have a good time so i poured it already it's pretty hazy smells smells sweet oh that's good a lot of fruit flavors not really strong on the hops because you got the zero ibus oh you could definitely crush a lot of these at a ball game and then stumble home without a problem this is delicious well i'm gonna finish this cheers gents without a problem sorry i had to thank you mike even though we make fun of you in your Canadian ways. Uh, you guys can follow Mike on the Instagrams at Sir Food Savage, all one word. And he's got a lot more tasty beers. He's also got a, a picture of him in a tutu. Mm, so look right. for that. Yeah. But I think we had like three drinks during that segment, right? There were, yeah. The Canadian. Yeah. Canadian. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> you mean you're oot? I'm oot. Yeah. Sorry. Oot. Oh, she's oot. Oot to beer. Uh, all right. Old timey word of the week Rusty Guts. Rusty Guts. It's a blunt, surly fellow. Oh, like Intern Brian. So like, <laughs> oh. like a drunk guy? Like Intern Brian. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah grumpy. Oh. Yeah, that's not a drunk thing. It's like it, grumpy man. and, you know, kind of like Scott. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a he's a, a rusty, rusty gut. Uh, blunt, rusty surly guts. fellow. Yes. Uh, all right. Not at all a rusty gut. No one could blame you for bed swerving. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. 
Her name is Campbell, and you can find her on the grams at Campbell Drinks Craft. Dots in between the words. Campbell.drinks.craft. Uh, in this one, she is at a beer festival drinking all kinds of good looking beer there. Uh, you can follow her, like I said, at Campbell Drinks Craft. Uh, ladies, do we approve of the Beer Babe of the Week? Yeah, she's cute. Oh, okay, good. It's, like I said, it's always awkward when you do this with your wife in the room. I like the silver gray hair. Uh huh. Deb, do you approve? Yeah, I'm still scrolling. <laughs> yeah, we're, just, we're literally, girl. we pulled her up on Instagram. We're just scrolling through oh, her feed now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Interim Brian is also scrolling. It's like the only one not sc- I, I did my scrolling earlier, so what can I say? Give her a follow on the grams at Campbell Drinks Craft Dots in between, and I think you'll be pretty glad you did. All right, we got bullpen beer to get to. We also got lots of booze news, so we'll start the news off, then we'll make a call to the pen. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. Good news for all the lazy drunks out there. Walmart is now extending their curbside pickup to include alcohol. So, you know, you can like pre-order online at Walmart groceries and shit, and then you you find your designated spot and they bring it out to you. You can now throw booze into the mix. Seems, That's pretty sweet. It seems a little dicey, but sure. Uh well, they're not like pouring you a drink right, at your not, car. Yeah, not like in a sippy cup, like a Starbucks drive through Well, they're not, but you could be. But like, don't grocery stores let you do pick up and pick yeah, up alcohol? I, I mean, I don't, it seems. All I, all I can think of is Scott going to Walmart and it's just a bad thing for everyone else on the road. He likes his beverages <laughs> while he drives. What? Anyway, he's, he likes to get drunk when he uh-huh. Ubers. Anyways. I see. Speaking of the grocery stores that do the delivery, I was walking the dog one time and a Vaughn's truck pulled out to a, one of the neighbors and I was like, oh, somebody actually does the grocery delivery thing. I've never actually seen someone do it around here. And I see the guy get out of the truck and he's like unloading these crates and I look, all wine. Oh, I Just love it. boxes of wine, not one food item in so there. So that's <laughs> officially the neighbor that's going to become our friend. I guess. I I figured they're probably an old alcoholic just because they won't go to the store for their wine. Maybe they were just having a really great party and you should have got us an invite. Maybe. I didn't see the neighbor. I just saw the Vons guy. See, I totally thought you were going a different direction in this. Where do you think I was going? So our friend was telling us a story about one of their neighbors who gets grocery deliveries. Uh-huh. And he... Our, our friend is an EMT and he works weird hours oh, yes, and he had guy. a week where he was home during the day, which didn't normally happen. And he kept like leaving and coming back and he would see that they had like a, a meal delivery service that was delivering the meals like every couple days or right. something. So the first set of meals was out there. And then a few days later, the second set of meals was out there. A few days later, the third set of meals and they're just piling up. Oh my god, are these people dead? And literally, he w- he was convinced their neighbors were dead. And he was trying to convince his wife. Well, not trying to convince her. He was telling his wife. He was certain the neighbor is dead in his apartment. <laughs> and I think they ended up contacting property management. Property management they did, contacted they, they the guy. convinced the manager to come over and, and look. And look. And, vac- and, and, and he was on vacation and forgot to cancel his meal delivery. <laughs> So, yes. But, but real talk, like three crates of meal deliveries sitting out yeah. there in oh, the yeah. weather, like wouldn't it smell like It was starting to rot. Shit? Yeah. Yeah. That was the thing. Once it started to rot, that's when he was like, something's, something's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, don't leave your shit outside. Also, what a way to tell burglars that you're not home. Don't <laughs> leave crates of rotting fucking right. food on your doorstep. Clearly, this guy's not around. Uh, good news to all the basic bitches out there. JetBlue is now partnering with Truly. And you can get truly on your flights with Oh, I'm in blue. for this. I'm in. <laughs> Unless it's pineapple. Oh. oh Could you that imagine? Would be such a letdown. Yeah, like on a six hour flight. Oh, yeah. The only yeah. truly oh, no. flavor is pineapple. That'd be like how they dump all the pineapple <laughs> cans. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting around the table like, how do we get rid of this shit? <laughs> Even Brian won't drink it. <laughs> yeah, that would be awful. Uh, a federal judge says that Miller Coors withheld marketing materials in the Stone Keystone case, and they must pay all of Stone's court fees up to now, which is $420,476.63. That's their legal fees. So there's no like profit on top of that, just what Stone has paid into court fees. 
Well, they haven't made a decision yet, There's right? There's still been no decision as to uh, if they'll stop Keystone from being Keystone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, fuck you, Miller Coors and Molson Coors from last week. Fuck all y'all. Yeah, I mean, I love the judgment. I Oddly, I would have expected court fees to be higher than that. Yeah, it has been going on. It's for been going quite on some for time. a really long time, right? Yeah, it's like a year and a half, I think, at this point. Uh, and this is all because they withheld some uh, some evidence. They they asked for marketing materials, and they brought some of their marketing materials in. I think they must have not included the ones that said "stone" in big bright letters across the can. Right. Way to not look suspicious, right? Yeah, that wasn't the best way to do it. Yeah, whatever. That's shady. Yep. Fuck you guys. Uh, and in nice beer news. Russian River, well, not nice because the whole state burns down every year now, but Russian River is brewing Sonoma Pride in order to support the fire- firefighters up there. This batch of Sonoma Pride will be specifically to honor all the first responders and firefighters who really work so hard to save Windsor and Heldsburg and save our community from having another uh, coffee park or even paradise situation. It was looking pretty dire there for a while over the weekend, and so we just want to commemorate and honor the efforts of all the first responders and firefighters. They did this uh, two years ago in 2017, and they're bringing it back. This time it's a different beer, and uh, but all the, not all, but some of the proceeds are going towards the firefighters. Excuse my can opening noises here. So good on you, Russian River. They were closed for quite some time during the fire up there, the Kincaid fire, I think yep. it was. Uh, they finally were able to reopen on Halloween, but they couldn't brew for a while because the gas was still shut off. So no gas, no heat, which kind of causes a problem. All right. Should we, should we make a call to the pen? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Let's make that call. He calls to the bullpen for beer. Yes, he does. I've been hearing a lot about this brewery lately. I've not had them yet. I hope. Intern Brian saved a little bit for himself. Good. Uh, I have not had this yet. Hubbard's Cave. Have you guys had Hubbard's Cave? I have not. No. It has been blowing up the internet. It's uh, out of Illinois and finally got my hands on some thanks to uh, Tavor. This is Hubbard's Cave Coffee and Cakes. It is 12%, 65 IBUs, 4.39 on Untapped. The faces over there are looking fantastic. And 93 on Beer Advocate. And a long description from the brewery, Imperial Stout with Abacus Coffee and Maple Syrup. Holy shit. Good? It is so, it's, okay, so it's very sweet. Yes, yeah. it, it smells pretty syrupy. Very sweet. Now, when it was coming out of the can, I, I was thinking to myself, it looks like molasses pouring out of the yeah. can. Really thick, mm-hmm. syrupy. Um, it's a motor oil over here. Mm-hmm. For real. And just, yeah, the color of it. Mm-hmm. Holy crap, is this delightful though. Wow. So, I get a you smell the booze. Like, you can tell it's a 12% beer when you when you smell it. Yeah, I, there's no covering this up. Mm-mm. Yeah, no. The the maple syrup comes through so strong. Big time. Yes. Big time. Which I normally actually do not like. Because I've had other maple syrup beers, mm-hmm. and I'm normally not a huge fan of that. Right. But with the coffee, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. It's doing it for me. Out. So... I would say this is not a float beer, like a, a <laughs> no, 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 not float like that, like a oh. ice cream float. Oh, it's I was not, like, I was it's like not, clearly it's not a pool no, no, beer. No. <laughs> right. Sorry. Yeah. I misspoke. It's not an ice cream float beer. Gotcha. But to me, it's like a, a sipping beer for a couple scoops of vanilla ice cream. Well, yeah, because then it's like mocha almond fudge mm-hmm. kind yeah. of when you, yeah, with the ice cream. Like a float would be too much, but just like a snifter, yeah. exactly. A snifter Brian says a snifter, yeah, yes. would be amazing. Should have brought out our little uh, snifter sampler glasses that we have. Uh, I would have felt fancy. This is a beer okay. for sharing. This is oh god, yeah, a sharing. Could beer. you imagine yeah. having the whole can no. to yourself? It's the big boy can. Yeah. Well, also, I would go to sleep after. Sweepies. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone will go to Sweepies after this one. Uh, yeah. This is uh, mm. super thick, super dark. It's dark in there. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It's sweet, but it, the coffee helps balance it out. There's a little bit of a hop in there just ever so slightly coming through. I think because of the bitterness from the coffee and a little bit from the hop, I think that makes the maple okay. Yeah. It's interesting because usually coffee is a predominant flavor for me. Mm-hmm. When I when there's coffee in a beer, 
I taste coffee. Right. This is like, oh, it's absolutely maple syrup. And then ever so slightly on the finish, you're like, hey, right. coffee's here. Yeah. Yep. Well, so like last week we had the uh, espresso stout. Like, yeah. that was fucking coffee. Right. Mm-hmm. This is not that at all. Um, but yeah, I feel like I, if you were ever broken down in the desert and you had a can of this in your car, you could pour it in your engine and... You'd be just fine. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Yep. This is 10W40 right here. This is <laughs> thick. It's going to coat the walls of my insides. You know what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to get two cans and I'm going to put it in one of those beer hats, you know, that you put the cans <laughs> oh in with the straws. Right. And then I'm going to float down the river with my cans. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. You just turn it into a floating beer. It's an extreme sport now. <laughs> <laughs> what this beer would be, two cans of 12 points, or 12%, that'd be a... Uh, Shit, cans. Yeah. Two cans? Two cans? Where's Big Dick Nick? That's all I could think them? of. Yeah. Uh, all right. Back to news. We talked about founders last week settling their lawsuit. Founders Detroit Tap Room is going to remain closed until 2020, at least, as they look for new GM. So looking for uh, a new GM. They're also going to do some sensitivity and racial bias training, uh, things they probably should have done years ago. I'm sorry, you can't find a manager for your tap room? That isn't racist? I just, how hard could that be? Oh, uh, they are in Detroit. It's like White City, USA. Now, did you see the thing about them donating <sighs> donating the profits of the tap room to local charities in Detroit? Oh, that's why it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's easy to donate when you're not, uh, when you're not open. Right? So, yeah, I, I read an article earlier today that says that they had made an announcement last week that they would donate 100% of the profits. Oh, geez. Um, from the reopened Detroit Tap Room to Detroit charities and community organizations through at least 2022. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. But also maybe open now. Right. Well, yeah, they're going to miss a good few months of uh, of that. Uh, I'm being handed Detroit racial demographics. According to the most recent uh, ACS, the racial composition of Detroit was black or African American at 79 percent, white at 14 percent, other race. At- wow. Well, I was way wrong. Yeah, I was way off. I was thinking of Michigan as a whole. I guess you know what I think of when I think of Michigan is uh, Tim Allen doing the commercials. <laughs> Oh my he's, God. he's the voiceover guy in the Come to Michigan commercials. Yeah. Well, because he's from there. Right. Exactly. But all I can think about is like, well, that guy's super white and supports some racist things. I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and got busted yeah. for dealing cocaine. I have a hard time thinking that a brewery as big as Founders, whether they're craft, not craft, not craft. Right. Uh, they're not. Has a hard time finding a taproom manager. Well, I think like, they're... Now being very careful. Yeah, but I mean, but, is it hard? I don't know. I get it. I mean, on my resume, I have a spot where it says tap room manager. Mm-hmm. If I can be a tap room manager, <laughs> anybody can be a tap room manager. The good news is you're not super racist. I'm not. Yeah. They I'm could, not. They could hire you and they'd be in a much better position. That's true. Yeah. So uh, founders is pretty fucked for a while i think will this be the end of founders how about that do enough people care about this sort of thing no no no. people are assholes i'm guessing the people that drink founders let's say other than like the cbs and the kbs like just you know they drink the ip all day ip all day ipa all day (laughs) uh they drink that sort of stuff that you can find in stores are probably not craft fans because craft people know that it's not craft and they're avoiding it anyways. So the people who aren't craft fans are probably not on the up and up of beer news. Do craft right. people really know? I mean, craft nerds know, but yeah. do like just generic people that enjoy beer who tend to drink craft, do they know? I don't know. I don't know that they do. All right, generic people who tend but, to drink craft, right in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But or, also, I don't really like KBS. I mean, sorry if I offend. No, someone, we had but, it on Beer Harmony. It is. It is not that great. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. It's not worth the price tag. I haven't had it. Really? And I've had it, but oh. I haven't had it in. I don't know. Intern Brian. It, since they've been craft, at least. It's been a while. Bourbon County. Yeah, um, not, he's saying it's either. been a while. Just like it's been a while. <laughs> uh huh. He also brought up Bourbon County, but yeah, that's Bourbon a whole County. different... That's Goose. Yeah. Also not I crap. mean, I, I didn't try KBS until it became Insta-famous. 
Like, I didn't try it till they were not craft. So yeah. I, I never had it as founders, the craft brewery, but I've had it a couple times and I was, it was just fine. It was like a syrupy, eh, not worth $10 for a 12 ounce bottle. This syrupy like concoction this. that we had way better, yeah. way better. This yeah. was the tits. This, <laughs> This is huge tits. Huge yeah. tits. Huge tits. This is fantastic. All right, enough about that Founders News. Uh, AB, you know, they, they bought that Babe canned wine a few months back, six months ago, whatever it was. It has now become the official wine of the NFL. What? Wait, what? Because nothing says, let's watch some football, like pour me a glass of shard. Wait, wait. <laughs> so We're you waiting. go to order and it's, can I get a Babe Chardonnay or a babe whatever, yeah. Can I get a babe? babe? Can I get a Can I get a babe? Uh, I don't know. Can I get a cab? babe for my babe? Right. That's yeah. awful. What's the thing that Ron Swanson says about clear liquors? Clear liquids? Are for, was it like rich people on diets or something? White, 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 women, white, on white women on diets or something like yeah, that. I fully subscribe to that. So you said Chardonnay. I mean, granted, I'm sure they have more than Chardonnay, but it's yes, probably like do. Chardonnay and rosé. It's probably just basically like we have red. We have rosé. We have... White. White. Uh, that's my guess. I don't know because it's canned wine and I haven't looked into it. I have a lot of thoughts on this in that this babe wine had to be big enough that a a b bought it. Yeah, it was owned... It was started by a huge social media person, um, the fat Jewish or the fat Jew or oh, something. Oh, fuck that guy, though, because oh, okay. he steals other people's content and posts it as his own. I mean, he's gotten all sorts of deals and makes money off of stealing people's oh. other, their content. There's things that they post on Twitter and their social media. And I then know he comedians takes it. who do this. Yeah, no, that dude's a piece of shit. Oh, okay. Well, I th- if I'm remembering correctly, this was his company and then AB bought it. I just am surprised that I've never heard of it and it got bought out. Well, are you a huge social media Insta person? I mean, I... Scroll all day, every day. I am on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm just surprised, I'm surprised that there's an official wine of the NFL. That's right. That's yeah, that, I, I guess that's this. the yeah. point. Is well, but that <laughs> and wine that of the we've NFL. never we've never heard of it, and it became it got bought out and became the wine of the NFL. That's mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, touchdown rosé all day. I don't know. It's it's weird to me. Uh, all right, Yingling. Back to beer. Thank yeah. fuck. Woo-woo. Yingling finally got their city approval to ve- to develop their Tampa brewery and hotel. Oh, I'm very excited. Although I don't frequent Tampa, uh-huh. but like I, I love Yingling. To. Absolutely love it. I I want to plan a, tr- a Florida trip though, yeah. just to try you know Cigar City and oh yeah Cigar City. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am so. It's hard with Yingling. Their beer is fantastic. I don't align with their politics. Right. Which yeah. is unfortunate. And I don't want to get political on the show. I don't align. And they donate a lot to the opposite side. A lot. I don't think I knew that. Yes. Seriously? Money has been put out. Which is so... But look, if you hand me the English, I'm still going to drink it. It's delicious. It's delicious. But yeah. Oh, that That's hurts. Sad. Sorry. Sorry, did I ruin it for you? You did. Urgh. That's like the glass shattering. Right. Like on How I Met Your Mother, the... Oh, that's I was thinking like a, Stone Cold Steve Austin, but okay. Oh, that, oh, that too. Yeah, 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 that's definitely where I was going. Shattering. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyways, if you're uh, looking to stay in a beer hotel, this is another one. Brewdog was the, the first one, and now Yingling's opened up. Stone apparently will be opening one up at some point. But They've been saying that for years. Yeah. I mean, they had drawings and everything. Hmm. So, yeah. Where is it? I'd like to stay there. Uh, a drunk man enters the wrong house. Whoopsie. 24 year old Birmingham man, man, not ma'am, ma'am, was arrested in connection with a home invasion during the early morning hours of Saturday after walking into the wrong home while drunk. Birmingham police responded about 3 a.m. to the 1300 block of Melton, where homeowners said a man walked into their home and sat on the couch in their living room. The homeowner confronted the man, who then ran out of the home. Officers located the man a short distance away, who told the police he was intoxicated and thought he thought the home belonged to a friend. The man was arrested and issued a citation for unlawful entry and disorderly conduct. Ever gone to the wrong person's house when you were drunk? I've been on the opposite end of that where somebody walked into my house. While they were drunk? I'm going to what? Yeah. So I was actually, I was a kid when this happened. And we lived in an apartment complex um, on Burbank Boulevard in Van Nuys. Mm -hmm. And we lived in an end unit. Mm -hmm. And so this person came in. Right into the front door. The front door was unlocked. Came right into the house. 
and then just stood there and looked at me. I was probably, I don't know, eight years old oh, sitting on the couch and my mom in the kitchen and looked at us and was just like, oh, shit, I'm in the wrong house. <laughs> like, totally. Yeah. And then um, and then like ran out. And later on, we figured it out that they were meaning to go to an end unit that was in the exact same spot as ours, oh. just in a different building. Oops. Oh, scary. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. But that we had to see that person in the complex and stuff. And they were apparently like a, you know, they were they were drinking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Baby drinking. As one does. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you walked into the wrong apartment, what else would you say? But I thought this was my friend's house. In Texas. Yeah. That's and, true. And I'm intoxicated. Like, what else would you say? Yeah. Right? I, yeah. In Texas, and, apparently you shoot the person in the Yes. Oh. It, yeah, oh, yeah. Let's, let's not, not do there. that. Let's yeah. not do that. Intern, intern Brian's getting dark on. He's us. being yeah. a real uh, what, what was it called earlier? Oh, a real rusty guts. <laughs> a really rusty, <laughs> rusty guts. That intern Brian. Yeah. What do you know? Uh, and then finally, OJ Simpson sues the Las <laughs> Vegas casino, alleging staffs claim that he was drunk and unruly has hurt his reputation. Oh sure, <laughs> hurt his reputation. Yeah. OJ. Sorry. Did he walk into the wrong <laughs> hotel room? <laughs> OJ so. Simpson is suing Las Vegas Hotel Casino that banned him in November 2017, alleging that unnamed employees defamed him by telling a celebrity news site that he had been drunk, disruptive, and unruly. Simpson, on parole in Nevada since 2008, filed the lawsuit Thursday against Nevada Property One LLC, corporate owner of the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. Classy I'm sorry, joint. but of all things, that defamed him? Right, not the murdering? The complaint not the jail, not the like. Yeah. Ste- well, he but he was convicted for s- the robbery or stealing robbery or whatever and it was, and kidnapping as well. So that didn't defame him. Nope. Or the but, murdering. But well, this, and he was found guilty in the civil trial with right. his ex-wife's right. family and Ron Goldman's family. Yeah, exactly. And also, I'm sorry, but how did they find a jury to try this? Uh, An impartial jury that has never heard of this or him. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, he should stop going to court at this point. Uh, the complaint acknowledges that Simpson, after several hours with two friends at a steakhouse and lounge in November 2017, received a notice from security guard as they left. It prohibited him prohibited him from returning to the Las Vegas Strip property. He says he was never given a reason. Cosmopolitan spokeswoman Rachel Henry declined comment. Simpson denied in the lawsuit that he was belligerent, broke glass, or damaged property. His attorney, Malcolm Lavergne, said his client's reputation was damaged by hotel staff and their accounts in a TMZ report that Simpson was drunk and became disruptive at the resort's click bar. TMZ is not a defendant in the lawsuit. Simpson has been released on parole less than six weeks before the incident. And uh, Lavergne said Friday his client was stung by criticism on he, uh, that he received on social media. The attorney said Simpson did not have a Twitter account in 2017, clearly. Uh, now we've got Twitter, we've got a lawsuit, we'll see how things play out. So basically, Simpson did not know that it was happening two years ago when he was banned from the hotel because he wasn't on social media. And now that he's on Twitter, like he's finding all this shit. Don't Google yourself is the moral of this story. Also, don't murder people. Right, but I was going to say... Oh, you? Allegedly. No, go. Well, yeah, what's the Allegedly most... Allegedly, don't What's the people. most damning thing to his reputation? Right. Probably the fact that he murdered two people. Well, and Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. Oh, sorry. But also... Are we doing air quotes but also, when we say that? <laughs> yeah. What also. could be What could be worse than whatever reputation he has currently? Like, how do you get worse? Mm-hmm. Right? Become I mean, drunk and would, unruly, apparently. But being drunk and unruly is worse? There's no way. I guess we're about to find out in this court of law. O.J. Simpson. Isn't there a statue of limitations on Twitter? Why should Twitter be brought up in a legal conversation at all? <laughs> the lawyer in the room is about to die. dying. Is like he's dying. His- he's like, stop well, it right now. Fucking gets, rusty guts. That's what he gets for not picking up a microphone. We tried. We tried it before the show. And instead, he just talks off mic and looks at us funny and looks like he's going to explode. And now we can talk about him all we, all we want because he won't respond because he's a rusty guts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's just laughing people at home are screaming at their speakers right now uh thank you all for listening ladies thank you for filling in and doing a great job can we make this show called uh the unfiltered gentle ladies sure and greg and greg, and greg. <laughs> yeah unfiltered gentle people no i like i like the ladies better yeah mm-hmm. you can just loop me in there i'll i'll sync up with you guys it'll be <laughs> fine 
Uh, thank you all for listening. Thanks for uh, joining. Don't forget to drink along with us. Find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com on the social medias at the unfiltered gentleman. Except for Twitter at unfiltered gents. One hop mess over on the grams for Deb over what here. Up? All one word, no spaces, dots, dashes. Beer Harmony Show for uh, Shannon over here. I don't think yeah. she's giving out her personal one. She's a private person. Uh, and then don't forget to drunk dial us, 805-538-BEER. It's 2337. Thanks to intern Brian for the fact checking. I enjoy being told I'm wrong. And uh, I was really I was really wrong this week about the whole Detroit thing. But not Michigan as a whole. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm glad to hear you enjoy being told you're wrong. Only by uh, intern Brian. I see. Not by you. Uh-huh. So thank you all for listening. I hope you're all staying very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Thank you.